Okay, this is Drake the Dragon, barely getting up. I don't know, my body, car's out of commission right now, it's in the shop. So a couple of highlights for today. This should be hopefully very short compared to my last one. Um, yes, this is actually my own pad-ish with some squeak toys. Squeak toys. But, um... So, okay, a couple of updates. First off, two weeks ago, someone rear-ended me. That's what the video had. Not a very good update. Car's still drivable. Muffler is kind of hanging, but tied it up. So there's a mechanic surge charge, I guess. But whatever, they're going to tear it apart and see if there's any more damage. I doubt there was because I pulled quite a bit apart. And I know that the Ford Escape actually as a metal tailgate in the back which is pretty good compared to when i was actually test driving the raid 4 it was all plastic i said i don't want plastic because people are going to be hitting you at least with metal you have about a 20 percent at least a 50 percent to reflect some of that energy and if i had the opportunity to welding i'd put a crossbar underneath it which is one thing they don't want me doing because i was going to check the place out but they waited till like now to tear my car apart after almost since like a weekend almost a half a week of being at the shop which is kind of annoying because I was going to try to get there and see what they tear apart like I did last time. And then I took some pictures of it when it was torn apart and got someone to make me custom reinforcements. Yeah, I, I put that crumple zone crap. You put a couple of metal steel bars in it. It's not a crumple zone anymore. It works just like it should. It's a roll cage <laughs> style. So that's why my last car drove more like a truck is because I added about a thousand pounds of steel into it. So it went from a one ton to a two ton. I think it was a two ton to a three ton. Whatever it was, all I know is it went up. And I saw the scale weight when I was dropping some stuff off. And I'm like, wow, I added another 600 pounds to this car. So, woohoo. So that's, that's kind of sucks about the new cars. It's just made with some shitty crumple zones. So I can't even get a bumper guard for it right now. I might need to see if I can get a lift kit to get some bigger wheels on there. I was told by the dealer you could get better real diameter wheels so it's off the ground a little bit more, which is probably what saved it because I was parked on a curve and the other guy nailed me. He went under my car. Even the witness said he went under. He was, he was like, well, yeah, that's because he probably sped up. If he sped up, he went lower down to the ground and he went under, which is funny because, you know, right after a turn, you're almost guaranteed to lose energy. So you tend to accelerate. So that's understandable. But there's no car on that intersection, but my car on one corner. So why would you pull up behind it and hit the accelerator? I mean, okay, I can imagine you bumping it at five miles an hour, parking it, but not the accelerator. So I have a nice side angle. It shows you he practically totaled his front end. So he was able to pull away, which means and he broke glass. There was glass on the floor, and I didn't even notice until I came down. And I noticed some stuff in my back of my car was rearranged, and then they told me he got hit. And I wasn't paying, I was too tired that night. But the witness told me, so I went back and played the video footage remotely, downloaded all the footages, and submitted it. I should have just called the cops right there and just said it was a hit and run and reported it, and they would have filed a police case report too. Because that would have actually at least went to my insurance company, and they can actually go file, pull a report, which takes them about a month to pull. But they can get the police report too on it as well. Even though the license plate, the other one, we could barely see it at the time. But having some good friends, we decoded the license plate from three or four different angles. Um, either way, so hopefully that will take care of that. Any toy updates? Well, I've got a couple of interesting projects I want to launch. There's some prototypes I want to run, but I need to talk to the owner of the design if he's willing to pay 50-50. If he's willing to pay a couple of hundred dollars... Um, I'll run a prototype or two prototypes so that way to offset some of my expenses. Um, yes, the golden question is, did I break even? And the answer is yes, I've already passed broken even, except for the tail project. I'm actually trying to work on other venues to see if that is actually any useful. But I now know what the expense is there. But, you know, it's a hit or miss. So because of this scenario, I'm not going to start a new project whenever I break even. My goal now is to have 25% ahead of that project in order to start another project. This way there's some buffer space. Plus, I also got to pay all the taxes and the fees 
Um, eBay takes it off in the front now, so that saves me a lot of work figuring it out later. Um, they usually take it off at the end of the month in the pass, so it usually comes up like the Skipper Toys, for example, sells the fastest, but then they take it at the end of the month, so I've got to go pay that bill. And you know how many people out there don't pay that bill, so that's the reason why they changed it. But the downside is I need to talk to a friend. I was thinking about selling under his name because, well, he's already got a store site with about 400 items up. So adding 10 other items doesn't add much to his workload. Um, he just got to email me when it sells and then send me the shipping info and then uh, or give me access to his account. And I can go and print out a shipping label under his name and whatnot. But I'm not sure how that is handled because, see, the money is now linked to his account, if it is, because they changed the entire policy in, in, pay, in eBay. Otherwise, I could link some. I think I can link the specific auctions could have been linked to my PayPal account. So the money comes in mine, and I can process it in the back end here. But so that's the reason why separate accounts is still better, but that means the only way to get a discount is I have to pay a subscription. But if I have to pay a subscription, I've got to make sure that's part of my monthly expense budget. So that's another huge thing. I will probably be dumping Patreon. I just spent another $90 and it seems like they're going slower and slower. So I'm going to just cut it off. It's not point. And I've seen some of them have more, more people in the advanced tiers now. I mean, for the last four years, like me, maybe three other were in the advanced tiers, but now there's like 20 people in the advanced tiers. So obviously I'm going to get off it's not worth it and which is funny because that means people do have money because in the past four years i thought people had money I spent money all the time i made good money last four years i had three jobs on this now i'm back down to one and i have one other one that's not really kind of getting on my nerves because i don't make a lot of money from him at all and i spend about four weeks of work to make two thousand dollars i actually don't make two thousand because the total material cost is half of that so that's almost not worth it for me. So that's why I hate to tell him, says, yeah, it's, I'm going to start charging larger fees, but that's because I'm in California and you just moved to Ohio and you had a summer house. That means you have property. I don't. I just sold my house and I'm in the process of trying to figure out what to do before I get capital gains tax, which is like 40% in California. So I lose half of that money anyways. So that's the reason why I'm not too happy with California. So most of us Americans have moved east already because of this. Anyways, that's good enough for today and this week's update. But yeah, catch me next week.